Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice. Now, come on, say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And he's finally back, ladies and gentlemen. The, the reason the KFC exists, Mr. Kahai the Legend for again. Say what's up, Kahai. Hey, what's up? Hey, a round of applause. Kahai's back. So the stream will run as smoothly <laughs> as possible, I assume. You know, no, today because that's, uh, that's not a guarantee. <laughs> Right on. So, it is Thursday Live Lesson. What we do here is we answer any and all of your questions. So, whatever question you may have, ukulele related wise or whatever it is that you guys have burning inside your brains that you guys want to ask us, um, just ask away via email, via text, via phone call, via pss, pss, on the corner. We answer any and all of your questions. Right, Kahai? Yeah. Yeah, we get questions from UU+. Plus. We get questions from all over the place. So, let's just try to answer all their questions right now. Hit me up with one. Uh, yeah, this should be a pretty easy one. Hmm. Um, so Dan asked, uh, we all see Algene playing a tenor. Hmm. Uh, however, in his personal time, does he play any other sizes? Hmm. Um, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> all I, the sizes. I play all the sizes. Whatever is, basically whatever is nearby, like, and that's just what, what I'll play and stuff. And we go from like, sopranissimo, you know, ninissimo, whatever you want to call it, like my little daughter's youth that like, uh. That I've showed you guys before. It was really, really tiny, tiny ukulele. Um, I right now on rotation uh, at my house. I have my um, super soprano. I have my uh, Martin soprano, and I have my Taylor tenor. So those three are in rotation right now, just depending on whichever one is the closest. That's the one that I'll play with. Um, but sometimes if I'm songwriting, that's when I'll kind of go towards a specific ukulele to uh, to go play. But if I'm just jamming um, in my garage, I have <laughs> my wife hates this, but I leave my you know my um, the broken ovation that I have and so with the hole in the back mm -hmm. and stuff. I just leave it in the garage. So like whenever I go play with my kid like outside, I just grab the ukulele and I jam outside uh -huh. and stuff and I just leave it there. Uh -huh. She's like, why don't you bring it inside? I'm like, if someone steals it, then someone steals it. You know? <laughs> don't steal it though. Don't go to my house and steal my uke in my garage. But there is a uke in my garage. Don't steal it. <laughs> but yeah, I just like I just kinda leave it there just cause whatever. It's it's like broken. It's all moldy. It's you know, like, it's it's a terrible uke. And um I haven't changed the str uh, the strings since. Not I don't know, not when... that the, those applause yeah, ukuleles not... are terrible. It's, it's just, just that been in my car really and, like, yeah, <laughs> for years, falling apart, yeah. and and it's it's like uh, it's been smashed by like some mic stands. <laughs> it's been smashed by like all kinds of different things. So it's a broken ukulele, but it it still plays, and that's the thing. I'm like, if I'm just gonna go outside and just hang out with my kid and play, like that's the one that I'm gonna play. So, um, because I started kind of like playing ukulele outside and I brought my tailor that's why on Instagram I have, a, I have a picture of my tailor with my family and so because I was bringing out stuff but it was just kind of a pain to like grab the uke with the, put the case put it in the case then take it outside and then take the uke and grab the kid and bring both in inside I'm like now I'm just gonna have like a garage ukulele which is, which works out pretty good for me right now <laughs> but that's the tenor um so I play all kinds of different sizes and stuff uh not that I don't play concert but I do have a concert at home I have a super uh soprano for that exact reason you know like that um, that's basically my concert uh ukulele but um i'm not particular if i'm just jamming i'm not really particular in any size and i jam this ukulele here because it's kind of like um all-purpose kind of ukulele you know so uh this tender has enough frets for me to um you know to kind of show and explain things to you guys and also it has a big enough sound that um that it kind of comes out nicely to the you know to the microphones and it's you know it's comfortable to kind of hold so it's not just like i have this small tiny and if i'm one of those guys that like if if I'm gonna sit here, and I'm sure you guys have noticed this, but I'm gonna like fidget around. If I had a tiny ukulele, I'm gonna do this or like <laughs> twirl it around. I don't know what I would do with it, you know. So like this size is great. I'm not like like messing with it too much on camera, but I'm I'm fidgety. I'm fidgety. But just now, people are gonna like watch closely. Like, oh, watch his hand. It's gonna go like this or something, you know. Like I'm always doing something with, with like with with my hands and my my legs. I'm always doing this or whatever, but. Uh, yeah, I like jamming other instruments. There's no particular reason other than when I'm songwriting. I think, uh, didn't you, like, previously on a live lesson, you said, like, I think you said that you you think tenors are really good suited for people who are going to play, like, solo ukulele. Yeah, so for, like, 
you know, if you want to do picking <clears throat> and yeah, and solo ukulele and stuff, if you're uh, you know if you're doing all that business, then yeah, sure, why not? I mean, like doji ukuleles would be great too, and that's the thing. Like, I I know I've said that, and it is it is good, especially like if you're recording stuff. Um, you know, like rhythm uh, rhythm things are usually better with small instruments, so it sounds more like an ukulele kind of like doing the doing the rhythm. Whereas if a tenor kind of does the rhythm, it still sounds like a uke, but it's more <clears throat> towards uh, classical guitar territory. And um, yeah, so when you do the picking with um, or the solos with the tenor ukulele, it gives a nice little contrast to the soprano uke. So when I'm uh, when I'm doing solos, if I'm just kind of fooling around at home, tenors, um, you know, if it's is a good way to kind of practice my solos. I think when you said that though, <clears throat> you're kind of talking about like for your guys' live performance. That's mm. why you like yeah, the tenor size. I and do because like, I think somebody asked like why you don't play like. Mm -hmm. concert or some yeah, kind of live and just like i said it's kind of like an all-around ukulele you know like although it sounds more like classical guitarish and stuff as far as that tone when you're strumming it doesn't really matter too much you know when it's mixed with the guitar and, and like the crowd noise and stuff people are not you know like listening like <clears throat> with crystal clear like five million dollar headphones in it like you know trying to get every single note out of my ukulele it's a performance you know it's just like i just need something that will be able to do anything that i need it to mm -hmm. but if i had a soprano, not, not have yeah, to switch exactly and have to switch ukes you know if i had a soprano um i might not have you know frets for some songs or it might sound too tinny you know for uh for some things because it might sound good for like for for strumming but once i start digging in there if i'm like gonna do tremolos and things like that it might be too tinny sounding and I'm not really a big fan of that. So it, I just need something to uh, that can handle anything that, that I need to do, you know. Because it sounds decent when you uh, when you kind of strum it. Like uh, even though I mentioned it's it's more into the classic guitar territory, but as long as I have this high G here, it keeps still, things in check. Still sounds yeah. like an ukulele. Yeah, because if I had a low G tenor ukulele, then it's even closer to like that you know that classic guitar territory. But since it's high G is here, it's you know. It's I pretty think good. It still sounds <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, yeah. ukulele-ish. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, I can't really think. I mean, I think that's why a lot of people who like tour and play mm -hmm. uh, play ukulele professionally, right? They mm -hmm. usually take a tenor with them, and they don't usually have like multiple yeah. ukuleles. Right. Like, the tenor kind of just like it's one, and then it makes mm -hmm. it easy for them to play whatever on that one. Yeah, ukulele. it's all purpose. Really, it's all purpose. You mm -hmm. know, with the with with the tenor. Um, I just I just feel like my attack too is a little too rough for a soprano, especially on stage. If I'm recording, then I can be a little bit more delicate with the strings. But on stage, you know, the adrenaline is pumping, the crowd is going and stuff, and you just want to give them a show. And I don't want to destroy Hukes on stage. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah. then there are others like Otasan plays a um, you know plays a soprano on stage, but like he sits down and he really pays attention to all his notes and stuff. Whereas I just feed off of the energy of the crowd. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah, not that the crowd doesn't go crazy for him, but it's like a totally different style. So for me, all around, because um, if I chose to sit down and do some like ultrasound stuff, I could, you know, with the, with with this ukulele, for example, you know. But then, um, yeah, and but well, the opposite can't happen, you know. Like I can't do that with a soprano though. And yeah. the style, yeah. the style that ultrasound plays. Yeah. I mean, like that's what he's known for, and that's what he's gonna play. Mm -hmm. most of the time so yeah. like why not play with yeah. a soprano right, 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 right. And, like it would it, it almost doesn't make sense if he's like mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna bring a tenor you know just right. this once but i mean you know on the um on the other side of that like herb walter jr goes mm -hmm. and plays a tenor he plays a tenor on stage low g same style as his dad and stuff maybe a little bit more modern but it's basically the same style mm -hmm. and i um, mean he's playing a, uh, a tenor ukulele so it's you know so if I think had Ota-san been, you know, like Ota-san in, in our generation, I would like to think he would play a tenor. I, I think so, too. Yeah. I can I can imagine that. Because, I mean, Herb is like the Ota of our generation, yeah. right? And he plays tenor. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think anybody would, you know, like would disagree with me on that. And he plays a tenor, so I, would, I think... I, like, I know, um, like, Jake and mm. James, right? Like, a few times I've seen them... Mm. Uh, carry multiple ukuleles. Yeah, but I bet if you ask them the same thing too, right? Like, oh, the for this tour or for this mm -hmm. travel, you mm -hmm. only have to, you can only bring one. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you're gonna use that to perform for several different shows. Yeah, or something. it's it's just it's a pain because like you don't want. Uh, 
you know you don't want anything happening to that you know to that ukulele that you that you bring and stuff so you get like a nice heavy duty case and whatever for and you protect it you know imagine you got to do that to two ukuleles i mean i know jake has the crew to do it and stuff but i'm sure like it's just easier and plus um last time that i kind of talked to him about you know like uh, ukuleles and kind of traveling and stuff he says that he likes to use one ukulele so that he knows that like what how that ukulele is going to act you know like if he has more than one ukulele like one may be like um tuned into what what he's doing with his uh, with his technique he approaches it a certain way and stuff and if it's like a uke that although he's familiar with it's like completely different he has to ship everything that you know that he does in order to fit that ukulele so if it's just that one he only has to worry about that one ukulele like uh kind of giving an example mm-hmm. is like if you brought multiple ukuleles to denver right yeah and what was it denver that you said like the neck sh- like it's kind of shrunk oh that was uh san francisco yeah like yeah. if you imagine having multiple ukuleles yeah. do that to you like mm. the day of your show it's kind of mm. like why they even bring two if yeah both of them are gonna you know mm. go whack and i gotta figure both of them out yeah. too yeah yeah so it's okay. it, yeah, it seems like it's just a uh, easy tenors are mm-hmm. kind of just easy. Tenors are just all around. Like that's mm-hmm. really all it is. It's like it's a master of none. Like it's you know it just does a pretty good job with whatever you needed you needed to do. It's not gonna do a better job at rhythm than say like a soprano would, but it's you know <laughs> it's. it's- it- it's like when you see a stats wheel and then yeah. it's just like a plain square. Yeah, it's plain it's square. Not, not like a star going all the way to <laughs> yeah. like whatever. It's just like, I'm to all the RPG <laughs> fans out yeah. there, yeah. Just gonna yeah, that a, makes sense a to smaller us. smaller circle. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, so the stats are nice and, you know. Yeah. It's an all, all around stats. It's like a, it's like a Roger Federer, you know, he's not... He's not big on the, you know, not, not big, too big on the serve. He's not too, you know, too good at, but he's good at all things. Yeah. He's not like Andy Roddick on the serve, and mm. he's not like a, you know, returner like Andrew Agassi is, but he's Roger Federer. He yeah. do everything. He's the man, the king. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, it was funny that you brought up your yeah. ovation too. Yes. Because I remember the week we were talking about how ovations are hard to like hold. Mm hmm. I, like I think that's why your ovation is good is because it's missing the back, right? <laughs> so it's actually like it has a giant hole yeah. that you just put against you, and you don't have and to worry fits. about it slipping. It fits just right, and it's cool because if I'm sitting down and stuff, I actually uh, you know I offset it a little bit so that like I have a nice little sound for it like on the back. Yeah. It's pretty sick. I lo- I love that uke still. So don't steal it from my house, please. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that, but whatever. I- <laughs> It, it's neither here nor there. It's out there now. <laughs> There's a, one of my sister uh, lived in Orange County. She said that her car was broken into. Yeah. But she only had like pennies in the. the <laughs> so they just like yeah. left it for her. And they're like, oh man, that's kind of sad. Like, let's not steal from this lady. She only has pennies. I feel like they might look at your ovation and be like, uh, we can we can leave this here. <laughs> like, it's okay. It looks like there's a giant hole in the back. It <laughs> yeah. reminds me of that like uh, that Dave Chappelle joke where like they're broken in a car and it was just like a candy bar, <laughs> the candy bar inside. It's like I chased that guy down and I found him and I grabbed him. I was like, what's all that chocolate on your face? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil how the joke ends. <laughs> I'll, I'll find it. For you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what's all that chocolate? On your face <laughs> uh so jim yeah. uh, like i think jim asked uh why you might not want to play like a soprano is like that the short strings are harder to bend he's like asking if that's um, like one of the reasons why you might not it's just uh well the size of the body you know is so it's so small and my attack is so big especially on stage that like it's too much for me like tone like really uh really matters um especially on stage and i guess especially during recording too so if i'm on stage and i'm like all pumped up and the crowd is pumping up and stuff and i'm like doing this that duke is just not gonna handle you know it's just i don't know if it's because the short strings small body but it's definitely the small body you know it's not um it's just not gonna be able to handle yeah that's that i can't you know say any more than that but yeah it's just uh it's too much my attack is too heavy yeah mm-hmm. 
But then there there are other times when you bring mm-hmm. Sopranos down to work mm-hmm. and you play things, and it's just it definitely sounds like mm-hmm. oh those songs fit really oh, well on a soprano. With, yeah, exactly. With soprano, yeah, so. but I mean, there's guys like Tiny Tim. There's people like um, the uh, the Dead Man's Uke, for example. Mm-hmm. Like they have you know Sopranos, and they definitely work. But uh, for myself, because I you know have a huge attack and a lot of like you know. Um, Hawaii like virtual so like ukulele dudes and stuff like Kale, Taimane for example, Jake like uh, Andrew Molina, all these guys will play tenors because our attack is really really heavy. Yeah, all of us like Chris Chris Salvador, you name it, like it's all tenor players. But they're def- not saying that there are no like um, soprano players, but it's a definitely different style of playing. Yeah, I think yeah, so. yeah, yeah, and that's like kind of just the the modern mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Solo ukulele player now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so uh, are we done with that question? I'm gonna fun fact. That's why I learned yesterday. Oh, yeah. So apparently, thirty percent of uh, of the population can do this. Like I've showed this before, where like my thumb goes back ninety degree angles and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the rest of the population just goes straight. Mm-hmm. So it's like this is a thirty percent, and it's like a recessive gene that you get from your parents. Fun fact. <laughs> just, yeah, I just learned it. I'm like, huh. and, it. and I called my wife. I'm like, Heather, I told you I was an alien. <laughs> I told you I was special. You, so, yeah, thirty percent. You know when my mom watches our videos? Yeah, she's like, "What is wrong with Aldrin's fingers?" <laughs> I'm like nothing's wrong with his fingers. She's yeah. like, no, there's something this different. About it's all about that boy. <laughs> but like my my thumb does that too. So yeah. I got I gotta tell her like mm. if you can't. It's I got this from you, mom. <laughs> got this from you. <laughs> my weird thumb from you. Yeah, apparently it's like a recessive gene and stuff. But it's pretty cool. I'm just like oh, thirty percent. I'm a thirty percenter guy. You know. <laughs> so we call ourselves now thirty percent of something. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that, Eric? No, you're straight. Mm-hmm. What's seventy? This seventy percent are over here, Kai. <laughs> Let's go talk over here. <laughs> Us thirty percenters do. Yours is like dramatic. Yeah, though. it's yeah. like a ninety yeah. degree full on. Because like... mine, mine is just kind of like. It's like yeah. it would, we could do a scale, like from Aaron's thumb <laughs> to your thumb. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that, like, I mean. You know, you know, people with like straight thumbs and stuff, like they just haven't played video games enough because I felt like this motion just like really bent it back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're, maybe you are onto something though, right? I, I mean, I don't know. You know, like he's he's never played the uh, the soda drinking game in Chrono Trigger. You know, where you got like mash the button mm-hmm. and stuff. That's if you can get a clip of that, <laughs> that is throwback. I'll, throwback. I'll it's it. very obscure. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so uh, do we have any questions? Sorry, that was a fun fact. F- fast fun fact. That's uh, F, F, F. <laughs> Three F. Um, should we do this question in the chat, Aaron, do you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, Rebecca said that uh, I changed my strings, mm-hmm. uh, same brand that I always use, and suddenly I'm getting a lot of buzzing. Mm. I'm wondering what I've done. It's mainly on the C. Uh, mm. When I strum, it's clean, but when my thumb comes oh. back down, it buzzes. And then Aaron kind of in the chat asks uh, if there is a buzzing on the open string or buzzing mm. when fretting. Yeah, and fret. he asks if her ukulele has a pickup in it. Mm-hmm. And she said, it's hard to explain. Uh, has nothing to do with fretting. When I initially pick the string, it sounds okay. But if I put my finger back down on it for a second time, it buzzes. Uh, no pickup. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because so sometimes, for... sometimes it's a pickup, um, kind of problem. Yeah. But yeah. um, she said there's no pickup. Because so. sometimes there's like wires inside and stuff. You know, or like... or sometimes it's a battery case. Yeah, it might be just like rubbing up again. So if you don't have a, that's a great question. Yeah, you know, it's a great first question. Because what I would do is if it's buzzing, if I notice that there's a buzz and stuff, I would figure out where the buzz is. So I would just kind of play it open, like kind of like what um what Aaron was saying. I'd kind of play open, and then I would like. The, up the frets like this and stuff and figure out where the buzz is i have a slight buzz yeah in. right there yeah. one on the first one and on two the first fret and that's you know um it's probably because uh of this of this here like this yeah cer- certain vibrations yeah, vibrations will mess with whatever's in there now that i moved it it's all good yeah you know? like so it, it is sometimes that um sometimes uh it's I mean, 
maybe like a humidity thing, you know, like mm-hmm. um, humidity can also uh, change that up because it might warp like the top of your ukulele. And if it warps even just a little bit, that's going to cause it to kind of misshape, you know, and um, and the angle that the strings are going to the nut is going to change. Yeah. Um, oh, um, also, maybe like when you were changing your strings, did the saddle come oh, out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you change all your strings? All, like, this, all the strings all at the, the strings same time. Off. Did you pull all the strings off? Did you change it one at a time? Um, I would suggest changing one at a time to keep your uh, to keep your saddle um, nice and placed the sa- exactly the same way. Especially for those people who have uh, who have pickups, because that can like you know move the pickup and your balance is gonna be all off and stuff. So if you take off uh, if you take off all your strings and then change it, that could that could be a cause. But if you change one uh, one string at a time, the other three strings will hold that uh, that saddle, saddle in, place. in place. So there's like yeah. all these different so, um, all these different things that it could be. Uh, what would be? Yeah, and also too like um, sometimes if that happens, like mm. you know sometimes you take off all of your strings, the saddle kind of comes out, mm. and then when you put the saddle back in, maybe you put it in Backwards. the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that might be like you mm. know. The mm-hmm. spot for your C string might not be the spot for, for the your, string. Yeah, your C yeah. string anymore. It's gonna so. if you flip it around, it's mm-hmm. gonna be for the E string, mm-hmm. and that's especially bad if it's a compensated saddle, yeah. right? Yeah, so. yeah. So then, so yeah, the way that your strings lie, mm-hmm. kind of, um, it might be buzzing against a fret, or yeah. you know, if it's yeah. if it's closer now. Then it, it might be buzzing against the fret, so yeah. you can you can try. So there's there's a bunch there's a I, bunch of different reasons. I know uh, something that you've done like while we're here and there, I hear buzzing and I I say like oh there's a little buzzing in the headphones or something. Mm-hmm. You'll like just take your thumb and then push the pin in a little bit more, right? Yeah, so, cause, like, the p- because that be it might right? also be like a loose pin. Is sometimes you know yeah the, yeah the, the I don't I don't stuff. know what kind of bridge she has. Yeah, though. so sometimes when you play it. And if this pin is a little bit loose, it sends that vibration here. I mean, your whole top is vibrating, basically. Mm-hmm. And the, the small vibration on this, if it's loose, that, I, that could also mm-hmm. uh, cause that. So there's a lot of different causes. I mean, I, it would be tough to to, uh, yeah. to give you a diagnosis without actually like holding seeing and seeing it and cool listening it. to yeah. it. Because yeah. the buzz might yeah. come from a different place, too. So mm-hmm. you really got to kind of listen yeah for where it's coming from right and i mean worst case scenario there's like a like a broken um brace like inside yeah that could be like causing the thing yes. i mean there's all different things yeah it could be something as minor as yeah you just it just kind of moved a little bit yeah i shifted know? the saddle yeah. a little bit or uh medium kind of problems like you know not um not humidifying the uh the, the, the ukulele if you need a humidifier and stuff does thus making that thing warp a little bit or worst case scenario is a broken brace on the inside yeah yeah. yeah, sometimes the glue uh, of the brace might comes off yeah kind of come off and then that way like the top is vibrating and it's rattling against the Mm -hmm, brace mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this like um this rarely happens but um like we've been talking about ukulele problems yeah but uh it could be string defects if you like look at the string and if it just kind of looks like you know, especially especially mm-hmm. uh, like um, synthetic string, mm-hmm. if it looks like the printer kind of just like jammed or like it, yeah. you can look and you can run your finger along the string itself since it's only the C string. Mm-hmm. You grab it, run your finger along, and see if mm-hmm. there's any bumps or if there's any nicks That's or true. anything. Yeah, and, and yeah, that rarely happens because mm-hmm. most of the string makers are pretty good about that. Yeah, but it, if you know if you do feel something like if it feels like oh my string doesn't feel smooth Mm -hmm. then that's probably it too Mm -hmm. and that's just changing your string yeah um on an unrelated note but kind of still on the string subject and stuff i just finalized finally the uh, concert and soprano strings for the ag cross aq that got sent over to akila today so oh. if it's still being held and stuff, it's not me. <laughs> like I just sent all my specs in, all good. It, uh, Lisa also brought mm-hmm. up that. Oh, uh, so Rebecca came back and mm-hmm. she said that it's a Kamaka pineapple with living water strings. Mm-hmm. And Ken's, Lisa said Ken's that. Strings. Uh, yeah, and she said that the the strings are great, but they're uh, low action, low so tension. It, yeah, oh. they have low tension, mm. so they're more prone to buzzing. 
Yeah, because it's kind of loose. Yeah, if yeah. your ukulele has low action, yeah, yeah. Then... That, that could also be a thing too. Yeah. If you bought the ukulele and at first it felt really good and yeah. it sounded there wasn't any buzzing, mm-hmm. it could have adapted to your environment and yeah. then like just sunk in a little bit to where now that you put in new yeah. strings, it just even if it's the buzz. same like pack of strings on the same ukulele, it's yeah. Still, yeah, it's yeah. it's more your ukulele that mm-hmm. probably like it, you know, it got used to, to the humidity or the the climate there and then it just made it so it's like the neck is straighter and the strings are vibrating up and down more tapping against yeah. the fret too yeah so uh solution what's what's the solution here guys i mean it's just we're we're acknowledging that she has a problem you know <laughs> yeah. or that her ukulele has a problem so what would be the solution uh take it to um the nearest music store that would kind of know what they're doing um i would call maybe kamaka to see like you know what's what's going on but well um, um try and see if, diagnosis if, <laughs> yeah. if you think that maybe it's the the mm. saddle yeah try and see if like you know if you think that maybe it came out and or yeah. shifted maybe mm-hmm. try shifting it a little bit mm-hmm. and try see, trying to get it find get it back in where... in mm-hmm. place yeah you can do yeah. a bunch of things on your own before yeah. you have to really can... reach out to anybody else mm. uh renee also said like uh that you can check if the hardware is causing buzzing mm-hmm. or anything and that that's kind of true too where you yeah. just hit the string and you kind of try and hear where it's coming from yeah like yeah to try coming... to figure out where the buzz is yeah if it's coming from the headstock mm-hmm. or the body or mm-hmm. something else yeah does she know where it's coming from did she say uh i don't think she she said mm-hmm. in particular mm-hmm. yeah so yeah because if it's up here then it might be one of the hardware problems like renee was saying Mm-hmm. So all you got to do is just like kind of tighten up whatever hardware seems. To yeah, be I don't know. I, I think uh, Kam- Kamaka Pineapple has closed back. <laughs> oh, yeah, d- yeah, yeah, yeah. The so shallower tuners. I think. Probably yeah. not. Hmm. Probably not. So it's uh, probably like, like a fret thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, first thing I'll do is to figure out which fret it's in, you know. And if it's uh, if it's more up here, then that's kind of like this kind of dipping down like so. Because that's that would cause these to 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 do that if it's more here then it's usually something else <laughs> so that's where it gets more complicated but yeah. here it's like okay well it's because of this you know yeah and, and she might want to try like picking harder than she normally would because mm-hmm. that usually just makes the buzzing come out louder yeah mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it just makes it e- like almost Almost to an annoying point where it starts to buzz on like every fret yeah. because you're picking so hard. Yeah. But it should be like a noticeable difference when yeah. you hit a fret with like, oh, that's a bad fret yeah. or whatever. But you know, most us professional youth players and stuff, we just ignore. We <laughs> yeah. oh, honestly, yeah. like if I'm gonna be like a thousand percent honest, we just sweep it under the rug. I mean, Brian Tolentino has had like a really terrible buzz in his C string second fret forever yeah he's just like but it doesn't like, come come yeah. out through the like pickup when he, yeah when he plugs it in so it stuff, doesn't matter yeah, yeah. The rug, you know it's all good and stuff i it, played jake's i mean never mind never mind <laughs> what, i didn't say anything <laughs> not gonna say <laughs> we can we can say that you've you've uh, done solos and I, i've been mm-hmm. like oh there's like a little buzzing or something oh yeah oh definitely my, my ukes buzz all the time and stuff and there's like you know different causes for the buzz so not you know every uke is not going to be like perfect every time like i think every single ukulele is gonna have a buzz in it one time or another in its in its ukulele life yeah and then also too maybe let your strings settle yeah Yeah. and then see because yeah i was gonna play it for a little bit Mm -hmm. and see yeah i don't think i've ever had an ukulele that has never ever buzzed period Mm -hmm. I, i don't think i've ever had a perfect uke like that Mm-hmm. It sounds stupid, but yeah. sometimes you pick up like an instrument, yeah. it'll buzz oh, one have. day. <laughs> <laughs> you that thing's never buzzed? Uh, not really. <laughs> Perfect uke. Because it's flukes. Because <laughs> it's a plastic fretboard oh. that's like you know it's not gonna <laughs> pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> and yeah. And then the body is made out of plastic too, yeah. so it doesn't really, yeah. you know, change that much. Yeah. Play it, play it each each fret. Let's let's test it right now. Yeah, it's a little yeah, G. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh-huh. Yeah, we might have found a perfect uke. And he's got like Frankenstrings on there too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's intonated perfectly because the strings are oh. so old. <laughs> might be onto something here, Kai. 
Yeah, I mean, I bought it. Yeah. Uh, when I bought it, I was mm. living in Colorado. Yeah. And that's the the reason why I bought it was because I knew that mm. it wouldn't. You it would take to the whatever the humidity mm. or you know dryness mm-hmm. and. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Maybe uh, I should play a uh, fluke when we go to Indiana <laughs> in like January. Is it January or <laughs> to uh, to Indiana? It's gonna be super cold. Because uh, it's yeah. Indiana. <laughs> So, Although um, with the fl- with a pr- plastic fretboard, yeah. you can't use wound strings mm. because it'll dig into the mm. it'll, the and it'll plastic, mess up yeah. mess up your frets. Have you? Yeah. Uh, is that still the original color? Or did you like repaint the black? Um, no, you... it's black plastic. Oh, okay, mm. okay, yeah. okay, okay. Because yeah. some of the the flukes that I've seen and stuff, like the black, has kind of like worn out. No, no, no. It's the dots. Mm. That oh, wore, that's wear out. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So, so I think. Um, my You're... dots, my dots actually wore out, and then I re, I I used like auto paint, you know, the nice. touch up paint, and yeah. then that has never worn out because fluke. Yeah. There's free advice for you. Use auto paint. Apparently, <laughs> no, well, I'm, I'm, that's a, that's free advice. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they've kind of like now now they offer um mm. fret boards with like actual wire oh, frets and, and have stuff like wood too. and stuff. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they have all all kinds of options. You are what? Like a ten plus year veteran. For, uh, <laughs> yeah, this for is fluke. old. This is really old. <laughs> but um, it's it's got some battle scars. <laughs> yeah, it's... let's let's show them. Let's because we're just like, oh, that. This and is, sorry yeah. for all the the uh, the podcast listeners because I'm like, if it's see. here, then it's <laughs> this, yeah. and if it's here, then it's the oh man. Yeah. That's why you gotta sign for U plus, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh Aaron's Aaron's ukulele. Oh yeah, there you go. So it seems some, you know, it seems some some battles and stuff. But it's pretty good. Like the um, the plastic fretboard is keeping it, you know, keeping it t- together, <laughs> really. And there's, it's nice, man. It's solid. Yeah, it's been dropped many times. What was um Daniel Cito? He's like uh, he named his his fluke like something because uh it's like a it's indestructible <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. Somebody like scratched it in the front. Yeah, no, I think oh. I think they were punching it, oh. and it, and it cracked a little bit. Yeah, they, yeah, they were something. punching the back. Yeah, like oh. oh, this thing is awesome, and then like, it, yeah, it cracked a little bit. So it, you can't. Yeah. Not indestructible. Yeah. Oh, that's throwback. What what is Dan Cito like uh, up to nowadays? He's an old yeah. man now, you know, because <laughs> he was like in high school when we uh, when we met him and stuff. Him and um bunch of uh, i can't even remember their names i'm sorry guys <laughs> but like hot dang yeah it's, been, <laughs> it's old school uh, been a long time. it's been a long time ah, that's memories that's cerritos right cerritos ukulele festival uh or, yeah yeah cerritos, i think so yeah cerritos dang that was pre-kai days too <laughs> yeah even, like you don't know who daniel cito is do you mm, I, don't I don't think oh, he met him snap yeah og ukulele on the ground <laughs> okay uh any other questions uh, well, Rebecca said that it's it's not coming from the head. Okay. And so. then she's said that she's also in Canberra. I don't know if that's how you pronounce oh, it. Oh, yeah. And the humidity change might might be messing yeah. up your you. Yeah. Because that's yeah highly suspicious already. You know. Because here, like here mm. in Hawaii, where the uke is built, it's yeah. really humid, and then mm. going to a really dry climate, it's gonna change. Mm-hmm. Even um, like Mike, when I bought my base. Mm. Mike said, oh, since you're taking the bass from uh, this room with AC mm. and you're going to your house, it's going to change a little bit. Wow. So even that, like, it's, you know, instruments change. And I was yeah. going to say, too, that I've definitely had instruments that had buzzes. Mm-hmm. One day I picked it up and I'm like, oh, it's buzzing. I put it down. Yeah. And the next day I pick it up. I'm like, oh, it's fine now. And I just forget <laughs> all about it. Like, I, you know, I don't think yeah. about like, oh, I got to fix it or I got to figure it out. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of us like just kind of sweep it in the rug because like mm-hmm. one day it might be there and another day it might not be there. And so if you don't or, think about it, it doesn't really. Or like, I, I know, like, mm-hmm. I, I've also kind of figured out how to play around buzzes. Yeah. Like not avoiding notes or frets or anything but mm-hmm. like kind of knowing how to get the most out of it without getting yeah. into buzz or something uh, that one right there is famous for buzzing a lot like that one i just couldn't stand <laughs> like at some point <laughs> in my career i'm like god i need a new uke because this is just it, it like it bothers me a lot especially if you're um if you're recording you know and it just kind of happens like you mm-hmm. can't take that out like you can't take the buzz out like there's just 
But you, you got to play another ukulele or something. You played that a couple weeks for like Breezen, right? I think. At, on yeah, the jam. yeah. And I, I don't think people called you out like, oh, yeah. It's well, <laughs> it wasn't like there was no like thousand dollar mics like pointed at it where it could hear like every little thing that I'm doing. <laughs> you know, like it's it's fine. How much of these mics? <laughs> uh, yeah. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> Ten thousand, sorry, hundred thousand dollar mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go, hundred thousand dollar mics pointed at it. But uh, yeah, that kind of just shows that you mm. can. I mean, we we understand that buzzing mm. is kind mm. of like something that you're just like, oh, I wish this would stop. Uh-huh. But you can like not let it get to you and, mm. and play it perfectly fine wow. too. Have, it's crazy. Speaking of that, I um, were you there with me at Avex when we went? Uh, when I went inside, no, yeah. I was on the air and stuff. Yeah, remember those mics and some of those mics like fifty grand or something. <laughs> like, I think Jake was saying like one of them was made by like a guy who makes Barbara Streisand's like microphones. Oh, and it was like this gold mic. And I was like, that was like the fifty thousand dollar one, <laughs> uh-huh. and I was like. I was like, Aaron, I think if we just grab a few and run away, <laughs> like, <laughs> the police would be on us pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did we tell you about that? I went to Apex Studio over on yeah, Oahu and stuff. I, That's yeah. like, and I think Kanye was like recording his 808s and heart, heartbreaks around that time too. So it was like, oh, this is like the studio that Kanye recorded. <laughs> Hot dang. <laughs> Kanye West was here and Beyonce was also, you know, recorded uh-huh. some stuff there. I'm like, this is, this is like professional studio. And there's like Bruce Shimabukuro like doing his thing. It's like, well, Bruce is cool too, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's Kanye, there's Beyonce, there's... Oh yeah, hey, it's Bruce. no longer called Avex. <laughs> oh yeah? What yeah. was it called? Island Sound Studios. That's probably not the same anymore. It's not the same company. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca asks, uh, do you know when your soprano strings will be available? I don't. Uh, that's kind of what I mean by that. It's like my end of the whatever, like got sent out and stuff. Um, but, but yeah, it's up to them for one. Uh, I mean, Nam is right around the corner. I mean, if they do want to release it, you know, if they want to make like a, a, a thing about it, if they want to promote it anyway, alongside with their other strings that are coming out, it would be that time. That's but, uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of what happened with the tenor strings originally too, yeah. right? Like we were just like at first we were teasing like oh. You're working with somebody making strings, and then it's like, oh, it's gonna be a tenor set, yeah. And then it's like, oh, it's, we got it all done, but we have no idea when this is coming yeah, out. It's but... just, it's the ball is in their court, basically, is what it is. And uh, yeah. you know, I, I uh, if I'm gonna be transparent about about it, the guy that I worked with originally on the strings is no longer there. That's why it's like it's kind of tough. Because that's the guy who I was talking to. We we're doing like R and D with it and stuff, and he was my main contact, like there, you know. And he like was, uh, and actually Mimo, the guy who, who who makes it and stuff, like I was also in contact with him. So it was like uh, this guy and and Mimo, I was in direct, like we would Skype call together and stuff, all you know, all the time and whatnot. Ever since um that guy left, it was kind of tough. Uh, not saying that like whoever's there now is not you know like not doing a good job or what. It's just it was just not the same relationship. You know what I mean? So it's, it's tough to kind of get things back and forth with like um when when someone like has to kind of take over that person's job you know that person gets every single client that that guy has had you know yeah. it's like it's tough it. so i don't i don't blame them at all and stuff they're doing great over there and um the strings that they have made for me are wonderful so i'm like um, i'm stoked that they even gave me a chance to like um to create strings with them so i'm, I'm i i know the weight will be worth it yes yeah <laughs> I, I think some people mm-hmm. kind of felt like oh why don't you just like uh, cut it to a shorter scale <laughs> just, length and just then you just big, put it yeah <laughs> and, you know and it's like yeah but you, you wanted to work yeah. on it and actually make it to <laughs> yeah I, I do and it's not like some golden formula where like you know you just like this uh you know diodario makes this and then they make you know uh, this tenor and then they make this concert and then they make this you know like soprano and they just divide it by however much they do it and just make it that much smaller or whatever it's like there's no golden rule to it it's just like this you can handle this much tension like for and it has to be like to my specs so it's not like just making it it's not just about making it smaller it's about what what my style my uh, my aggressiveness is going to be you know um able to do with those strings on that on the ukuleles that i use so that's like why it takes so long yeah, yeah. a lot of r&d <laughs> i i remember the with the tenor strings you would come in some days and be like 
I got my new strings. And then, like, the next week, you'd be like, I got new strings again. (laughs) Like, every, it seemed like every week, it was kind of like changing the formula little by little Mm -hmm. to get to Mm -hmm. where it finally got, right? Yeah. And I think even like when we went to Nam and they gave you like one of the final versions of the strings. Yeah, I still didn't like it. Yeah, you were kind of like, oh, change this a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, okay, we'll get on it. And we'll yeah, because I mean, it was like, it was ready and stuff. They gave it to me. They even came to the performance, you know, like uh, we performed at Huntington Beach at Island Bazaar. And um, and the guy that I'm talking about and Mimo, you know, they came down to go watch the show to see their string, you know, like in, in action, basically. And they left halfway, you know, like through the set. And they're like, oh, this song's great or whatever. But then like right up, like right after they left, I think my string broke, like my A string mm-hmm. broke. And it's just like, these are new. Like, why did it break? <laughs> and why are they not here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, those why were the prototypes. Here? Yeah, those are the prototypes. Yeah, so, the, so. That, that wasn't the yeah. final yeah it was what was and... supposed to be like, you know like the the final thing but <laughs> yeah but they had, like, had to do yeah because yeah, i guess i never before they actually released it mm-hmm. i never got to test it out like on a like on a, perf- a performance or on, like on a tour basis and stuff so like that really put it to the test I, and, and that's what we have now i mean yeah. I, I remember even mm-hmm. like the slight variation in color mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you got strings and you said like these are pretty much it but the color is going to be a little bit different. You wanted the color. Yeah, I don't want it to be like, bam, mint green. <laughs> you know, it's like, it. no, no one no, no one wants fully mint green strings. Under, I mean, I don't know, say nobody, but but like you want just normal looking strings, but like closer, it's like, oh, it is kind of green, you know? Like I don't want it to be super stand out, you know? Like mm-hmm. it's just uh, slightly tinted. Slightly tinted, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, I don't, I'm particular with that stuff. I love colors, you know? Mm-hmm. Just like it's like this red, beautiful red color, you know, <laughs> by a member, I, and it was yeah. uh, it was Veterans Day this Monday. I figured I'd wear this shirt today. <laughs> so, thumbs up to all the veterans out there. I have veterans in my family and stuff. So, thank you for all you guys do. Yeah. So just be on the lookout for the strings, and I'm sure we'll say it on mm-hmm. here too when they're they'll be coming out mm-hmm. or when it's getting closer mm-hmm. to it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a question in the chat, but do you want to do the uh other video in question we got sent in oh, is the chat one fast or is that one um it could take some time so okay let's do the video one because we already kind of talked about the answer to that so yeah okay uh do you want me to yeah read the of... question and then yeah. we'll answer uh so this is from wesley and he said i just bought a new eight string tenor ukulele mm. are there any good habits that i should start cultivating or bad habits that i should avoid I'm thinking in particular about my left fretting hand. I'm noticing that I'm putting a lot more pressure on my thumb for bar chords. Mm. Uh, can you recommend any eight string ukulele artists that I should listen to? Are there particular styles that eight string is better suited for? Uh, I feel like we've answered this before, like, but you know, that's how many episodes ago, and no one's gonna listen to every single episode mm-hmm. of the show, mm-hmm. right? But um, it's it's basically the the eight string. It's kind of like um, imagine your ukulele with like like a chorus effect on it. That's basically all all it is. Um, your left hand, I I will acknowledge that it, you know, it will have to work a little bit harder because it has to you know hold two strings at the same time now than uh, than be you know than before. We're just kind of holding one string when you when you fret your um, your chords and stuff. Um, so in that sense, we do tend to kind of go at it a little bit harder because our, our brain thinks like, okay, well, you know, I want to I wanna get both strings. So like I got to really like have a firm grip on it and stuff. Um, but it's usually just these fingers, you know, that, that will do that. Your thumb that you're seeing kind of, you know, kind of hurts. Um, it's probably because when I watched your video, you know, like you're uh, a few things. You're doing the duck hands, which is like your thumb is going straight like this, you know. And when you're doing the uh, when you're doing your chords, watch like how uncomfortable that looks. If I'm playing my B chord and my my uh, my thumb is doing the puppet hands, it just looks super awkward when I take it off, you know. Like we don't have our hands like this naturally. So what you do is this thumb here, instead of it pointing up, have it like to the side and point it towards um towards your headstock. And more like up here. So if I were to give it a time, so if you know, if I'm looking at it this way, uh, let's see if from let's back. see if you get yeah, this. Because <laughs> every time you do this, I, I, I... it's ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Ten o'clock. 
Right. Remember, so. everyone deployed Friday, right? Friday. <laughs> so if you do this, if I were to take my ukulele out, it just looks like that, right? It just looks like me grabbing a hold of something. It looks super natural. No, not super natural, but it looks very natural. <laughs> it looks very natural. Uh, and, you know, if I take it off one more time, it looks like that. So, but if I had my puppet hands, it looks like that. And that also is going to have your thumb put in a little bit more work because um, when we do this, the puppet hands kind of grip, it, we tend to want to pinch the, uh, the thumb with the rest of, uh, you know, with, with the rest of our fingers and stuff. So that's going to have too, uh, a lot of pressure on your thumb in the back here as well. So this is going to start to hurt. I'll move it a little bit right here, 10 o'clock that way. Okay, um, because what's what's gonna happen is it's gonna do this where you're not pinching it together like you know like puppet like a puppet. You're basically doing this like if I were to, you know, uh, what was it like not a seesaw, but it just helps it kind of counter it, you know like counterweight. I guess mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it's it's always the same motion as like yeah, just putting as, your as, hand in a fist, right? Mm -hmm. Like it should be like you're just closing your hand naturally. Yeah. yeah. So wherever your your uh, your thumb naturally goes when you make a fist, that's where it should be in the back of your ukulele for you know for pretty much all of like all the chords. Like if you're playing a bar chord like this, that's what my bar chord looks like. So I'm kind of doing this counter uh, counterweight. Pointer finger uh, goes down like this, you know, uh, pushes down. I'm not not too much, and then this this thumb kind of helps guide it by uh, by counterweight <clears throat> the weight on the other side in the back like this. So I'm not pinching it like this. I have it down here. <laughs> so this, it's because because you're pinching it, you're doing this, you know, this motion that hurts right right here. I can already feel it. So, but if I'm doing this, no hurdy hurdy. <laughs> okay. Um, Yoda mentioned uh, your thirty percent thumb. <laughs> <laughs> My thirty percent thumb. Yeah, thirty yeah. percenters. You know, but actually, <laughs> actually, like I just I just kind of like ho yeah. held a bar chord yeah. just to think about how I do it yeah. and it's pretty much the same thing yeah. and I don't I don't have a bendy thumb like that so. <laughs> I like when so, I'm, even if 70 percent could could do it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when I'm playing music and yeah. then I notice that my hand is hurting mm -hmm. I know that I'm, I'm doing that like duck yeah hole, and I, I have to like forcibly tell myself like oh I gotta yeah. point my thumb yeah duck hand puppet hand whatever you want to call it not puppet don't we're not we're not ventriloquists it's, it's kind of funny because in the original yeah. bar chords yeah. Yeah. minutes you said to make a, yeah. a puppet. So yeah, we're gonna we have to update that. the uh, the thing because you know what we in the ten years, eleven years, it would be terrible if we did the same exact things we did t like eleven years ago. We haven't learned a single thing. Yeah, there's, there's no progress. This is progress, guys. <laughs> That's, I'm mad enough to say we were wrong. We, yeah. we were totally wrong. So, it's, but it's, it's it is it's this now. <laughs> <laughs> Pluto is not a planet. <laughs> 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 I, Sorry, Plutonians. <laughs> I think that though, yeah. like doing the pinch thing, yeah, was the standard way to teach Back like then. any fretted instrument mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I yeah. think the new idea of pointing your thumb to your headstock yeah. is kind of like more something that's just come out, like kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Are we bringing back Yuke minutes, guys. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna bring it back. Uh, actually, yeah. Pluto is a planet. It's oh, a, what? It's it a dwarf. Back. It's a dwarf, dwarf planet. planet. Yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like um, what is the other yeah. one too? Like, st is it Stegosauruses? Right? Like they said that those weren't real or, or bron Brontosaurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. said it wasn't real, and then now it's back. It's real. now it's back. <laughs> it's Brontosauruses or Brontosaurus? Brontosai. Yeah, yeah. But Triceratops is still not a thing. Uh, I heard that was like that's no such thing as Triceratops. I don't know. We're, what are we? We're not paleontologists <laughs> yeah. and stuff. We just really like Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the idea is that it just changes, right? Like uh, things yeah. change and you learn new things. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so as far as uh, his his technique goes, um, I've noticed, you know, how uh, Kahai and I noticed and stuff. When you're when you're doing this, you kind of keep your your wrists here. And you're doing the strum that's kind of like you're you're moving it sideways. You're moving your hand like the, like you're you're waving, you know, like you're waving your hand to somebody. So that will uh, will cause like this stretch right here on your. Oh, you can't see it. Right? And like this stretch from uh, from this part of your uh, part of your forearm wrist and it goes down like that. So if you keep doing this motion, 
that can't be that can't be good for you because you already feel the stress here. So that's what we teach people to do the uh, the the twist the wrist kind of like you know looking at your hand like this or your nails like this and looking at your nails like that because it's it's more doing this than like than this motion because this motion stresses this right here. Okay, so I know you're you're doing it so that you can get like kind of the thumb pick thing or, or whatever and stuff, but you can still get the thumb pick thing by just um getting your uh, getting your forearm a little bit more in here so that you're uh you're aiming here and not aiming here you know first off so because you're aiming here you can still get that thumb and and do you know your claw hammer or whatever you want to do and stuff but it just looks a lot you know a lot better because you're twisting the wrist now instead of doing this it's yeah like when you're showing it it's more fluid than mm -hmm. his kind of look more uh, like steady yeah or like not not steady uh like just in one same position stationary, and yeah, yeah, stationary. Yeah, um yeah. also here you tend to want to lean on your uh you know the uh, pointer finger more to the left and stuff when you're doing your your chords so that's why the puppet hands kind of come in there because uh you're 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 kind of leaning in on this on this finger or towards the you know towards the head stop you can kind of uh, and your wrist also gets kind of all miss uh, misshapen if you watch your video again and then pay attention to your wrists you're gonna see your wrists like do all these crazy bends you can't see it from this angle but he's you know your wrists are kind of doing this no bueno you want your wrist to be nice relaxed and mostly straight you know you can have a little bends in the wrist and stuff but this extreme bend like that just you get these chords no no bueno yeah or like whatever yeah like that it was like that you don't so, want it either way though yeah. right like either no. too bent back or yeah. too bent forward so what you do is um you know just have it have it nice and straight like so just like how you would if you were to just kind of grip you know grip anything just kind of close palm like this it's more towards the middle and you can go towards towards here or towards like towards back there but then if you're leaning this finger too much forward and have this weird bend and then you're bending it up like it just seems uncomfortable so mind your the positions of your wrist so that it it's not going to cause you any problems down the line okay i think um i, I think like adam neely said mm -hmm. that if your wrist is tweet like mm -hmm. if it's bent too much like that yeah. then your ukulele is too or your your fret instrument is too far away from you mm -hmm. and if it's the other yeah, way around makes sense. it's yeah. too close then it's too close, too close. so you mm -hmm. want to find that middle ground where it's mm -hmm. you know it's comfortable yeah. <laughs> just want to be comfy you know yeah but everyone wants to be 90s pop punk when you're you're st yeah. <laughs> your wrists are like this straight yep. yeah there you go like power chords how else are you gonna <laughs> look cool while playing <laughs> <laughs> yeah if i don't look like blink 182 like mark office when i'm playing then what what's the point of playing guy why did i buy these uh checkered pants <laughs> i'm not gonna play like that why do, why do I have these van shoes? Yeah. <laughs> can't, you can't skank if your guitar is like up here. That's just not you know? cool. Why do I have my Quicksilver shirt? <laughs> <laughs> my puka shell necklace. My puka shell necklace. If I'm not going to play like Pepper, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, so the, the chat question. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, thanks uh, for sending your uh, your student review, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's really helpful yeah, for really us helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see you. The the other part though uh, was, can you recommend any eight string oh, little artists? Um, there's not a lot, you know. There's uh, definitely a lot of Hawaiian like ukulele players, like um, like Hawaiian musicians, like not like ukulele players from Hawaii, but from Hawaii and sings Hawaiian music. Those are the guys that are gonna be playing like eight strings and stuff because it sounds more full so when they're doing their strums you know it sounds very uh very big you know when they're uh, when they're doing their like especially when they're doing a when they're doing those kind of songs it sounds even trippy uh, or even more trippy when they have that chorus like effect of the mm -hmm. eight strings so mm -hmm. um no nobody in particular doing anything like crazy picking wise or anything you know super complicated it's mostly a lot of strumming players and stuff um if if you're looking for names people like um brothers casimero has like a 12 string like guitar player um that's kind of like that you know uh it's like mm -hmm. it's almost like the same thing but if you want ukulele specific napalapalai you know has a um has an eight string ukulele player in there um 
I believe uh, who's that one that just got signed by Kanlea? They won a Hoku this year. Uh, ah, I can't think of it. Ah, I don't know. It's like my my fellow Duke mates. <laughs> ah, it's embarrassing. That's okay. Um, but yeah, mostly like um, Navai Eha. I think they're called Navai Eha. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, they're. I think they have you know ukuleles with like more than uh, more than four strings in there as well. Um, just you know like look for Hawaiian musicians and you're gonna hear what like uh, what they do with with multi stringed ukuleles. Yeah, I I think uh, a few weeks ago we talked about it. Like yeah, yeah, I saying. remember talking about that. Yeah, and then I also linked some some of the, okay. the artists cool, there cool, too. Cool. Yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely link some in our posts, our mm-hmm. replay posts. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Next up. Um. So, uh, Ritesh, uh, this is a separate question. Yeah. Um. Oh. I'm sorry. There's like a couple questions. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Ritesh asks, "What's the hand position for B minor?" I'm guessing it's like the same thing. Yeah, same thing. It's like this. So imagine it's like if you had like a like a catcher's mitt, yeah, and you're like catching the uh, catching the the baseball. So it's kind of like that when you're catching the baseball, but then it's just your pointer finger and then release the other fingers. So here's me with my mitt. Boom! I'm gonna catch the ball. <laughs> Let go of these. And that's it, basically. So my thumb here, ten o'clock. Pointer finger. If you need other fingers to support it and stuff, if you if just your simply your pointer finger is not sufficing, you can use a middle finger on top. No shame in that. I do that all the time. Yep. So that's your position for B minor. Yep. And oh, I'm not quite sure what Yoda meant by this, but he asked, "Wouldn't a mandolin style work, for example?" Uh, I don't know if he's talking about that picking, like the thumb, the thumb kind thing. of like pick right here. Yeah, I mean, you can go ahead and go, you know, go do that. I'm not really. Uh, I'm just advising towards when when he's the way that he's playing it and stuff because he's strumming with with the with the thumb. He's kind of doing this. And repeated, you know, like motions of this, I can already feel it. Like if, if you guys kind of grabbed your thumb and kind of like, you know, went like this to the side, I can't see, and then went like that, you're gonna feel this stretch right here. So if you kind of just repeatedly do this, it's uh, it's gonna hurt this in the long run. Might not hurt now and stuff, but it will. I think you'll you'll find too that a lot of the guys who do the mandolin stuff. Mm-hmm. They they're also twisting the wrist. They're yeah, not they're only like they're they're this. over here also. You know, like they they keep their hands kind of stationary here, but they do like some stuff. They twist. Oh, uh, I guess um, Yoda was saying that for uh, wouldn't a mandolin style song work for mm. uh, a eight string ukulele? Um, I guess yeah. If, I mean. But same thing like ukulele and stuff. There's like four string mandolins and there's like eight string mandolins. I think right? I think it's a little different too because the mandolin is tuned differently. Mm-hmm. It's tuned to sevenths, not to the fifths. yeah the fifths. And then um, the mandolin is steel string, so a lot of times it's a lot of picking, yeah. arpeggios, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little different. Yeah, I mean closer than like I guess like a four string uke would, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, he's yeah. a he's a point. Yeah. Yeah. Next okay, uh, yeah. and then uh, that question from before, Ritesh yeah. asks, uh, or said, I'm loving slack key music. Is nice. there any advice? Um, go listen to as much slack key as, <laughs> as possible. Like there's, you know, there's CDs upon CDs. Uh, maybe albums, I should say. <laughs> like, <laughs> CDs. <laughs> there's like albums upon albums of just slack key masters. Like if you look up slack key master, you know, like uh, on Spotify or, or on Amazon or anything like that, it should show up like a, a compilation album. Um, if you want, you know, like if you want names and stuff, you should definitely listen to Makana. It's like one of the craziest, um, like slack key, just any key, <laughs> like a guitar player <laughs> in general. Makana is so good. Uh, Makana guys like Jeff Peterson is um, um, they're they're awesome. Uh, the traditional, you know, more traditional guys like the Ledward Kapana, you know, and um, and and those dudes and so just like listen to guys like that like it's it's really really uh really cool how they take like such a simple concept of like i'm 
let him have an open you know like an open tuning and it's like okay cool i guess everything turns into like you know it turns into kind of a bar you know like bar mm-hmm. chord and this and this and that but like the way that they do it is like oh that's you're doing way more than i thought like you were gonna do with just this open because to me i think of it as like oh he's making it easier you know like it's it's so easy now like to uh to play the ukulele for for, for guys like makana it's like no what's gonna be a harder challenge for me to do is yeah. have to learn new chord shapes or whatever i'm like dude yeah you're you're approaching it all wrong or yeah. right or however you want to think about it and yeah. stuff like i think <laughs> makana yeah. kind of makes his like the uh slacky hawaiian slacky yeah and then modern finger style guitar too so, so it's kind of like yeah it's a mix of both i mean makata's played for like um the former presidents so he's you know he's up there he's yeah. that guy is so good we also have um some slacky lessons yeah right? that's right for ukulele yeah. available mm-hmm. for ukulele yeah, yeah. yeah. On, on ukulele on the ground mm-hmm. uh one uh island style i think mm-hmm. the solo version of that mm-hmm. and then um it, it's a like a spanish song or something i think oh, there's uh, roles in the title oh uh or uh, uh romance uh, diamore romance diamore yeah, it's uh, a open a minor yeah 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 so it, you know it's yeah. not hawaiian slacky but it's an <laughs> open tuning yeah, yeah so but mm-hmm. that's more like guitar like spanish guitar or mm-hmm. yeah because like guitar has got that open e minor mm-hmm. so instead of like an e minor but still works to kind of slack in the strings ish yeah. play, play around with that and <laughs> yeah. then just try those kind of things yeah but listen to those you know those dudes to uh to start out with edward kapana um makana and jeff peterson good yeah. stuff yeah all right uh anything else uh i think that's it i think that yeah. was you know what would have sounded good with that ritesh is a taylor Tenor recording. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. I'll try to record some, and I'll, I'll let you listen to some. He, no, I'm just joking. I'll... He's, <laughs> he's like he's never gonna help you with getting <laughs> with another ukulele. Yeah. It's great. I'm so grateful. I, I mean, I play that thing every day, Ritesh. So thank you very much. I heart you, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in to Thursday Live Lesson. On that note, <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Thursday Live Lesson. My name is Aldrin. This is, uh, that's Aaron. That's Kahai. Thank you so much for downloading this as a podcast and listening to us talk for like an hour and stuff. You guys are awesome. Make sure to sign up for UU Plus to take your ukulele playing to the next level. Everyone have a great one. And tomorrow we'll see you for a little Friday Live Jams. Mahalo. <laughs>